It's Thursday, April 11. In the headlines, National Water Commission to spend $400 million on drought mitigation. In business news, MFS Capital Partners Limited acquires microfinancing solutions limited. Regionally, Grenada to host Caribbean Tourism Organization Conference. And in sports, Adidas backs for lead sponsorship in Jamaican athletics. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. The National Water Commission, NWC, plans to spend $400 million on the trucking of water to mitigate the effects of the current drought. The issue was the focus of Wednesday's post-Cabinet press brief. Acting President of the NWC, Kevin Carr, gave some insight into the plans of the agency, while Director of the Met Service of Jamaica, Evan Thompson, spoke of the impact and forecast of the drought. Residents in western Jamaica have been warned to brace for water restrictions as severe drought has been affecting the western end of the island, especially Westmoreland and Hanover. Director of the Met Service of Jamaica, Evan Thompson, said six parishes were characterized as experiencing a drought in January to February. So at the end of February, which is where we have the fulsome um, set of data, um, all 13 parishes received below normal rainfall. Six parishes were actually being characterized as experiencing drought, which was all the way in the west, Hanover and Westmoreland, and then some southern parishes in St. Elizabeth and Clarendon, and then in the northeast with Portland and St. Mary. He says that the drought conditions are expected to worsen over those parishes and extend to others. Drought is, is assessed over a period of two months. That's why we have January and February here. Um, and that assessment showed that much of the dryness that we experienced was concentrated in the western part of the island. So based on the level of rainfall experienced during March, the drought conditions are expected to have been exacerbated because we saw no appreciable rainfall during March based on the preliminary data that we have collected. And be it was becoming more severe for those parishes that were already seeing drought and um, it, we expected that it would be gradually increasing over other parishes because of the dryness that we've been experiencing in the past month and of course going into April thus far. April, May and June, we see that there is some improvement that is likely to occur. It probably will not set in immediately because we are in the month of April and as we see in this forecast here or the outlook, it shows that the western part of the island will continue to experience quite a bit of dryness, even more so than the rest of the country. NWC says 70% of its systems are currently being acutely affected by reduced intake. There will be further impact westward of Jamaica. So the systems that are currently impacted, Lagwood, Bulls Road, Kendall, New Mills, Jerusalem Mountain, will continue to, have, to be impacted in the coming months. On the western side, inflows into KC supply zone, which is served predominantly from the Mona Reservoir and the Hermitage Dam will have low inflows. In addition, on the northeastern side of the island, will continue to experience impact on those sources that serve our customers. Mr. Carr says the agency continues to truck water to affected customers, prioritizing health facilities and schools. We have increased the number of trucking in these areas. We have also implemented schedule to intermittently serve our customer base in this period. If it gets worse, we will transfer water from the Raya Cobra system into KC. We will further do nightly adjustments. We will continue to do emergency chuckings for areas that are not able to accommodate pipe supply. And finally, we will introduce wells to augment some existing source. He notes that additional measures will be undertaken to reduce the impact on the NWC's systems across the island. The public is being urged to conserve on the use of water during this dry period. Concerns over the air quality still linger following a fire at the Riverton landfill in St. Andrew on Tuesday. Up to Wednesday, areas of the corporate area was blanketed with smoke from the landfill, which prompted a release from the Health and Wellness Ministry.
Persons with respiratory illness such as asthma and other vulnerable groups, including pregnant women, urged to limit exposure by reducing outdoor activities. Closing windows and doors is recommended until the air quality improves. Jamaica's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Jacqueline Bessessa McKenzie, added her voice to the matter. Persons prone to respiratory problems should be particularly careful. Have your rescue medications available, and if you are on medications, make sure to take them. Visit the health facility early if you are having problems. Healthcare facilities should be prepared for increased numbers over the next few days, as persons who are now being exposed may run into problems later. The National Solid Waste Management Authority says the fire at the facility has been extinguished. However, lingering smoke continues to pose a nuisance in surrounding areas following the blaze. Following recommendations of the Jamaica Education Transformation Commission report, also known as the Orlando Patterson Report, the Ministry of Education and Youth has an approved philosophy of education for Jamaica. Danita Rodney tells us more. Following extensive consultations with key stakeholders, including students and student leaders, parents, members of the church community, teachers, principal education officers, and other technocrats, the education philosophy for Jamaica was finalized on March 7, 2024. The philosophy is said to embody the tenets of the ministry's efforts to transform education for national development and reads as follows. Under God, the Jamaican educational philosophy embraces diverse learning capacities and styles, aiming to nurture each learner's full potential. We provide a comprehensive education, blending academic and vocational pursuits with values-based teachings and life skills. Our focus is on fostering community harmony, appreciating our cultural heritage, promoting inclusivity, environmental stewardship, and respect for all. Through this approach, we aim to cultivate learners' understanding of themselves. Respect for humanity and love for country is embodied in our national vision, anthem, and pledge. School administrators are being encouraged to circulate this philosophy to all stakeholders to ensure its widespread adoption and to incorporate its core principles into their daily routines. Reporting for the news on PBCJ, I'm Denita Rodney. Minister of Health and Wellness Dr. Christopher Tofton presented the Jamaica Health and Lifestyle Survey 3 at the National Library of Jamaica, ensuring preservation and access to the information for posterity. Dr. Tofton made the presentation at the NLJ's offices on East Street, downtown Kingston on Tuesday. According to Jamaica Information Service, the study provides information on the country's health status across the leading public health issues, including the burden of and risk factors for non-communicable diseases. It allows for comparisons with previous versions of the survey to monitor trends in disease status and includes important baseline data on the health status of the population to guide future initiatives, programs, and policies. The survey also provides data on funding invested in the health system. Students at 13 institutions are poised to benefit from the 2024 National Budget Secondary School Tour, which runs from April 9 to April 30. More in this report from Denita Rodney. Spearheaded by the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, the tour aims to sensitize students about the national budget and the ministry's role and function. Now in its second year, this year's theme is the national budget is everybody's business because it impacts every Jamaican. Speaking to students gathered at St. Catherine High School for the 2024 launch on April 9, Minister of Education and Youth Favor Williams explained the importance of the national budget and how it impacts education. Shout to entities, international entities, local entities, to help them, uh, to ask them to donate buses. So these are some of the ways that we expand the budget for schools by working with them to be in touch with uh, some of our partners to provide these things. But I'm saying all of that is to help you to understand that um, in order for you to be here, 
State Minister at the Finance Ministry, Xavier Mean, urged students to learn more about the national budget. If you do not fully understand how the budget affects you, consider this. It is from the national budget we build schools, we repair schools, we build and we repair hospitals, we fix roads, develop infrastructure, national infrastructure, and so much more. Without the schools, you could not learn. Without the hospitals, you could not receive appropriate and adequate health care. Students, some students benefit from the PAP program. That is something that has to be budgeted for in our national budget. The tour will continue at Waterford High and Cumberland High on April 11, Bridgeport High and Greater Portmore High April 12, Hale Selassie High and Norman Manley High April 16, Ascot High April 18, Jonathan Grant High and Jose Marti Technical High April 19, and Eltham High and Spanish Town High April 30. Reporting for the news on PBCJ, I'm Denita Rodney. Time now for the business report with Denise Williams. Good day everyone and thank you for joining us on the business report. I'm Denise Williams, your guide through the latest happenings in the world of business. Regional Rating Agency Caribbean Information and Credit Rating Services Limited has moved its outlook for the JN Group from stable to negative. In a release, Carrie Chris says the negative outlook is based on the Jamaica National Group's subsidiaries reporting losses for two consecutive years. It says this loss position is expected to persist over the next 12 months, but at a lower level. The ratings of the holding company reflect its good market position in Jamaica with subsidiaries in the United States, United Kingdom and the Caribbean. Carrie Chris says those JN subsidiaries continue to provide diverse income streams and support. The rating agency says the outlook could improve with an expansion of the group's product and service offerings and or improvements in operating efficiency. MFS Capital Partners Limited has advised that the company has successfully completed the 100% acquisition of Microfinancing Solutions Limited. The transaction, which was first announced at the end of 2022, was finalized in time for the close of the company's third quarter on March 31, 2024. This transaction marks the first major deal executed since the company was acquired in 2022 and subsequently renamed. Microfinancing Solutions is now the flagship operating entity in the company's portfolio. During trading on April 10, 2024, the top three advancing stocks covered the finance, technology, and energy sectors on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. MPC Caribbean Clean Energy Limited JMD shares advanced by 15% for a $12.37 price increase to close at $94.86 with 100 shares traded. T Tech Limited shares advanced 10.95% for a 22 cent price growth to close at $2.23 with 7 shares traded. QWI Investments Limited shares advanced 10% for a $0.07 cent bump in price to close at $0.77 cents with 6,640 shares traded. On the declining stocks that traders experienced on April 10, 2024, the top three losers covered the investment, microfinance and manufacturing sectors. Lasco Financial Services Limited declined by 18.42% for a 35 cent price slippage to close at $1.55 with 57,232 shares traded. Blue Power Group Limited declined by 13.08% over 
or a 42 cent price drop to close at $2.79 with 18,519 shares traded. Epley Limited declined by 9.95% for a $3.98 price drop to close at $36.02 with 6,286 shares traded. Over on the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, trading on April 10, 2024, registered a volume of 161,745 shares crossing the floor of the exchange valued at $2,259,323.47 Trinidad and Tobago dollars. Massey Holdings Limited was the volume leader with 77,000 673 shares, changing hands for a value of TT $339,611.37, followed by Trinidad and Tobago NGL Limited with a volume of 14,747 shares being traded for 119,464 Trinidad and Tobago dollars and 83 cents. Moving from the money, moves of investors, executives, and companies, we turn to the Forex market. On April 10, 2024, the Bank of Jamaica reported that US 81 million was bought from Forex traders, while US 85.1 million was sold to Forex traders. Buying directly from the Bank of Jamaica, foreign currency traders sold the US dollar for $155.69, and bought the US dollar for $154.29. The difference between the buy and sell rate was $1.64, which represents a profit for Forex traders for every US dollar traded. Canadian Forex traders earned a trading profit of $1.42 from transactions with the Bank of Jamaica. The Canadian dollar was sold at $114.63 and bought for $113.21. For traders looking at the British pound, they pocketed a profit of $2.13, selling it for $195.89 and buying it for $193.76. For our credit report tip of the day, diversify your credit portfolio. Cultivate a diverse mix of credit accounts to strengthen your credit profile. This could include a combination of credit cards, installment loans, and mortgage accounts. By demonstrating responsible credit management across various types of credit, you enhance your credit worthiness and position yourself for favorable lending terms in the future. And with that, we wrap up today's business report. I'm Denise Williams. Appreciate your company. Stay well informed, stay ahead of the curve. Until our next update, take care. Thanks, Denise. In regional news, Grenada will be hosting the country's next sustainable tourism conference to be held later this month from April 22 to April 24. Beverly Tellisford reports for GBN News. Adam Stewart, executive chairman of Sandals Resort International, will be the keynote speaker at the Caribbean Tourism Organization's Sustainable Tourism Conference, which will take place in St. George's, Grenada, later this month. Carl Grant Hashtiolik, Chief Operations Officer at the Grenada Tourism Authority, said this conference is the Caribbean region's premier event, which creates an avenue for high-level networking and regional dialogue on issues, challenges, and opportunities for sustainable tourism. We have over 40 speakers that's going to be coming to Grenada to discuss um, you know, the matters that are facing Caribbean tourism and sustainability and where we go from here. Um, the program is designed in such a way where we have um, panel discussions, master classes, and also uh, study tours. And at the study tours, we will have those um, uh, participants um, having a sense of what Grenada is doing on a sustainable tourism perspective. So we have some tours that are designed for them, and they'll also be going to Karakou as well. So the programming, right? So the programming starts on Sunday, and that starts with the media breakfast and orientation. And that's going to happen at Six Senses, and then we roll straight into Monday. Um, and on Monday, what we're going to be having is the official opening um, ceremony, and I will go straight into the um, keynote speaker, who's going to be Adam Stewart. 
and, and then that rolls into the different panel discussions, etc., for the rest of the day. With the presence of over 20 regional and international media and 25 Caribbean tourism organization members, Hoshti Alec hopes that this provides a perfect opportunity to expose Pure Grenada to the world and what's unique about us. The sessions will take place at the Radisson Grenada Beach Resort Convention Center. However, there is a registration process for the event. Uh, what we hope to achieve is to really be able to lock down who we are as Pure Grenada, the spice of the Caribbean. We really are a sustainable brand. We really are about our sustainability, our ecosystems, our community work. Um, you know, civil society does so much. And I mean, this actually then falls on Earth Day as well. And I know that, um, you know, community, be it a specto um, and other organizations, they're actually getting ready to do a lot of significant work. So for us, you know, we want to be able to bring to the table at this conference, you know, what sustainable tourism means for Grenada, because of course, um, you know, registrations, we have a lot of um, regional international registrations thus far. And, but of course, we're calling on the local community to also register because we need them to participate. Their voice is important as well. Belize and Taiwan have shared diplomatic relations since 1989. And since then, their ties have only grown stronger. And while there are additional areas of cooperation that are currently under discussion between the two countries, just this week, Belize signed a new agreement as part of a regional initiative with Taiwan, as Minister Fonseca shared. Taiwan provides tremendous support to Belize in many different areas, in education, in health, in agriculture, uh, economic support. Um, so we are discussing a number of, of, of projects um, you know, but we, those are still at the discussion stage. Um, and so, we, you know, we, we look forward to, to new opportunities for engagement with our friends. Just this week, um, our CEO, uh, Her Excellency Amalemai, was in Guatemala, where you had a, a agreement signed between um, Taiwan and SICA um, to provide support to, to SICA. So a number, I think about seven projects are, are under that agreement in many different areas, um, you know. So Belize and Guatemala uh, will benefit from those projects in meaningful ways. Venezuela's decision to create a new state in Guyana's Esequibo region violates orders from the International Court of Justice. And as such, Attorney General Anin Nandal, SC, says the United Nations Security Council can intervene in the situation. The Attorney General spoke about the situation on Tuesday night, one week after Venezuela promulgated its new law for the defense of what it calls the Guyana Esequiba, and hours after Guyana requested a meeting at the level of the Security Council to discuss Venezuela's transgressions and what actions are needed. As the President indicated, the United Nations Security Council is currently reviewing the latest position adopted by Venezuela. That is to say, the enactment of that repugnant and offensive legislation that purports to annex Essequibo to Venezuela. We are hoping that positive actions will arise from the UN, the UN Security Council's consideration of the matter. I have already indicated that that law and the actions taken by Venezuela in enacting that law violates the interim measures granted by the ICJ in December of last year. And it is the UN General Council, sorry, it is the UN Security Council that has the mandate of ensuring compliance with orders issued 
by the International Court of Justice. So we anxiously await the outcome of that consideration. In sports, global sports goods manufacturers Adidas has promised to invest 5.7 billion Jamaican dollars into Jamaica's track and field sponsorship over the next eight years if they are chosen as the next main sponsor. According to a report from a nationwide newsroom, there is a document from the German company outlining its plans for not only the country's athletics at all levels, but also to assist with upgrading infrastructure. Nationwide says under the proposed deal, Adidas intends to make available close to 3 million US dollars or 441 million Jamaican dollars a year in cash to the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association for eight years. In addition, 2.18 million US dollars in equipment will be put aside per year with 2 million US of that in general products and 50,000 US dollars per year in products for the next generation of Jamaican athletes. The document also reportedly notes a 10% royalty bonus per year from sales of Adidas apparel. Also, in the alleged proposal, Adidas says it will put aside a retainer for the JAAA of 2.5 million US or Jamaican $37 million per year for eight years. The Cricket West Indies four-day championship resumed on Wednesday with matches throughout the region, including at the Sir Frank Worrell Ground at the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus, where the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force took on combined campuses and colleges. It was a slow going for Red Force being invited to bat first. They lost Vikash Mohan for four and Jid Gooley for eight, before Kieran Otley and Jason Mohammed steadied the ship and picked up the pace. Otley fell three short of a half century in the 26th over, but the scoring responsibilities were embraced by the veteran Mohammed as he registered his second century of the championship, hitting 157, which contained 22 fours. But he was not the only three-figure hero on the day. Amir Jangu employed some aggression to also reach that milestone with 151 not out. He had 13 fours and six sixes as the Red Force amassed an impressive 374 for four at the close of play. Getting the wickets for CCC was Amari Goodridge with 3 for 37. The other not out Red Force batter is Anderson Phillip, who is yet to score. And that's it for the news on PBCJ. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thank you so much for watching.